So from where uh, do you do not understand which step, which last step do you want me to repeat? <coughs> Can you please specify the last step, which from where you want to? Uh, when we said BC, okay. Okay, so uh, let me again have a quick review. You see, uh, first we have to make uh, take one item and then find the support of that, that, that item. So first we take, uh, took A, B, C, D, E and then uh, have written the support. Okay, how many times they have occurred in this table? So A, A has occurred two times, B has occurred three times, and C has uh, three, and so on. Then we delete those item sets which are not on the minimum support. For example, D is equal to one is not having the minimum support, which is two in this case. So we'll just neglect it and make the table again. Then we have to increase the size of the items from one to two. So we'll have different set of items from uh, of size two. A, B, A, C, A, E, such that all the items are covered. Then we have B, C, and B, E. Then we have C, E. So the order does not matter, and we will then find the support of these items. Okay? How many times A, B is there? So it is one time. How many times A, C is there? It is two times in this table. So then we will write the support of this. And after that, the support, which is less than the minimum support, which is one in this case that will be neglected and then we'll reconstruct this table. So now AC, BC, BE and CE. Now we can construct two more tables, okay? Uh, from the combination of this we can have AC, uh, sorry ABC, okay? And then we can have BEC because we have C in common, so ABC and BEC, BCE both of these tables can be constructed. Now if you look at ABC, so ABC is how many times is ABC in this table? ABC is only one time. So that's why we have not taken ABC and we have directly written BCE. Since BCE has a support of two, uh, the, it is occurring two times in transaction ID 20 and in transaction ID 30. So that's why we have taken BCE and it has a support of 2 and this will be the frequent item. Now this is a similar example, the problem with this example I found, uh, the, 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 this example that I have taken, this I have taken from the lecture slides which are there on the Blackboard course materials and this is taken from the Cambers book, okay? And the example which was given in the Kumar's book which is this one. So it, is, it has some problem. I found that uh, the count is written as three, where the count of milk, uh, bread, and diaper is just two in the table that we, are be, we have been doing in this uh, lecture, okay, which is this table. So I have not taken that, so I have not taken this example. If you count the bread, milk, and diaper, they are only two times, uh, bread, milk, and diaper on transaction ID four and five. But by mistake, they have written three times, okay? So that's why I have not taken this example. So this example that I have taken, you can it's easier and you can find it in the uh, course and materials and activity slides of week number of week number six. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> now uh, where were you? Now we can have candidate counting. Uh, we scan the database of transactions to determine the support of each candidate item set and then we reduce the number of comparisons and store the candidates in a hash structure. And uh, then instead of matching each transaction uh, with every candidate, we can also match it against candidates which are, uh, which we have placed in the hash buckets. And uh, you can see how they are placed in the hash buckets. We can also generate the hash uh, trees from the hash tables, uh, sorry, hash trees uh, from the hash functions. So suppose you have 15 candidate items of length 3, so you need a hash function and maximum leaf size. In this scenario, the maximum leaf size is 3, and everything which has which contains 1, 4, and 7, it will be on the left side of the tree, which contains 2, 5, and 8, it will be on the middle, and which contains uh, 3, 6, 9 will be on the right side of the tree. And similarly, you can see 1, 4, and 7, and all these things. You can go through these. So subset operation. 
given a transaction T, what are the possible subsets of 3? So, with these are different possible subsets. Uh, we have level 1 in which we can make uh, 4 subsets. Okay, uh, we can have different subsets as you can go through these. And then we can have level 2, level 3. And similarly, we can make many subsets. So, what are the factors which affect the complexity of an uh, of, of these problems? We have a choice of minimum support threshold. So, if we lower the threshold, what are the complexities of frequent item set uh, uh, generation? So, the choice of minimum support is very important in this. For example, if we lower the support threshold, then the results are uh, more number of frequent item sets and this will increase the complexity as there will be many different frequent item sets and it may also increase the number of candidates and maximum length of the frequent item sets. Then the second factor which is affecting is the dimensionality which means that the number of item sets of the data set. So more space is needed when we have higher dimensions or we have more a number of items to store the support count of each item. And if the number of uh, frequent items uh, increases, then both computation and IO cost may also increase rapidly. <coughs> Excuse me. And then another factor is the size of the database. Uh, since a priori makes uh, multiple passes, then the runtime of the algorithm may increase. Uh, with the number of transactions or with the size of the database and also the average uh, transaction width can also increase with uh, denser data sets and this may also increase the maximum length of the frequent item sets and travels, traversals of the hash trees. Okay, so the next topic is maximal uh, frequent item set. Uh, we know that uh, a frequent item set is a set which is more frequent and with all the subsets are also frequent and uh, now let's look at what is a maximal frequent item set. An item set is maximal frequent if none of its immediate supersets is frequent. <coughs> Excuse me. So in this uh, uh, diagram you can see that there is again a red line. Uh, which is dividing the frequent and infrequent or not frequent item sets and above the line all the item sets are frequent and below the line all the item sets are infrequent or not frequent. And we see that there are some nodes in the tree structure which are represented by the light blue color and these are the item sets which are maximal frequent. Okay, why we call them maximum maximal frequent? There is one condition. An item set is maximal frequent if none of its immediate super sets is frequent. So let's check their immediate frequent sets, uh, super sets. If they are infrequent uh, or none of them is frequent, then it means that it's a maximal. So let's check with the AC first. AC has a super set of ABC. Now this is infrequent. Okay, true it can be taken as a maximal. Then let's check the other superset which is ACD. It is also infrequent so okay we can take it as a candidate. Then let's check the third. Third one is a frequent which is ACE. So now we cannot take AC as a maximal frequent since one of its superset is a frequent set. So now we move on to the next one which is uh, AD. The first one A, B, D, it's not frequent, okay, good. Then A, C, D, it is not frequent, that is good. Then A, D, E, all, all three are not frequent. So A, D is now the maximal frequent item set since all of the supersets are infrequent. Similarly, let's check uh, A, C, E. Now A, B, D, C, A, B, C, E is the, is the superset and a, C, D, E is the superset of this. So we find that both are infrequent, therefore A, C, E is also maximal frequent item set. Okay? So, 
Similarly, there is another term which means closed item set. An item set is closed if none of its immediate supersets has the same support as the item set. So if the immediate supersets has does not have uh, the same support as the item set, then it is known as a closed item set. So let's take an example, and this is a very clear example which will explain everything. So let let me read the, this, and then you can see in the diagram how it's it's working. So. <coughs> The latest diagram above shows the maximal closed and frequent item sets. Uh, the item sets that are circled with blue are the frequent item sets. Why? Because none of their subsets are infrequent. All of their subsets are also frequent item sets. So, and they are also uh, greater than some minimum support. The item sets that are circled with a thick blue are the closed frequent sets. Now the thick blue are closed frequent sets. Why? Because none of their supersets is a frequent set. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay, the item sets that are circled uh, with the thick blue are the closed frequent sets because their let's let's uh, this, their supersets have not they don't have the same uh, support. An item set is a closed if none of its immediate supersets has the same support as the item set. So when the item set has different uh, support than the uh, than the subset, than any of the supersets, then it is a closed set. So let's check with the thick one. So it is three. It is two. Uh, so it is uh, yes. It 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 satisfies. Then the second one is one. The third one is two. So it has three. So none of the supersets has the same support. So it will be a Close item set. Again, for three, let's look at this. For C, the superset has one support. The superset, this superset BC has one support. This superset has two, which is CD. So again, it has none of the superset has the same support. So it will be a closed superset. Similar is the case with this and with this. Now. The items that are circled with the thick blue and have the yellow fill are the maximal item sets. So in order to determine which of the item sets are closed, all you have to do is to check. So these are the maximal. And for maximal, we know that their supersets are not frequent. So the superset for this is ABCD. So it is not frequent. So the superset for CD is ACD and BCD. Both are not frequent, and they are also maximal since the support is also not the same. Okay, so now you know how we can differentiate between these. Okay, so now we see that uh, maximal frequent sets they are the subset of closed frequent item sets, and they are the subset of uh, uh, frequent item sets. Uh, the next thing is FP or frequent pattern growth uh, algorithm, and we use a compressed representation of the database using the FP tree. So once an FP tree has been constructed, it uses a recursive divide and conquer approach to mine the frequent item sets. So you see that uh, we have transaction ID 1, 2, 3, 4, and for 1 we have A and B, for 2 we have B, C, D. So we, uh, after transaction 1, we'll just write A and B. And then reading two, we'll have B, C, D, right? Like on the right side, we have B, C, and D. So we'll grow the tree in this order similarly. And then we can also fix some pointers. For example, A is pointing this arrow. For A is pointing all the A's. For B, it is pointing to all the B's. And for C, it is pointing to all the C's. OK, so you can go through these. So tree projection. Items are listed in lexicographic order. And each node P stores the following information, which is item set for node P, the list of possible lexicographic extensions of P, and a pointer which is projected uh, uh, to the database of its ancestor node, and a bit vector which contains the information about which transactions in the projected database contain the item set. 
So you can have uh, see uh, the tra transactions and the database. So these are ECLAT. In ECLAT, for each uh, item, st store a list of transaction IDs uh, horizontally and vertically. Then we take uh, uh, we do these following steps. And here you can see the effect of uh, distribution. Uh, many real datasets have skewed support for distribution. So this is support distribution and support count and stored items. So effect of support distribution. How to set the appropriate minimum support threshold? So if uh, minimum support is set too high, we could miss the item sets involving interesting rare patterns. Okay, for example, some uh, expensive uh, products they could be uh, they could be missed. Okay, and they are important in the terms of selling of them. So if minimum support is too low, it is computationally in expense sorry expensive, and the number of item sets um, may become very large. So using a single minimum support threshold may not be effective. So what we do? We can have multiple minimum support. For some items, we can have one support level. For other items, we can have another support level. So how to how to apply a multiple minimum support? For example, minimum support for one item uh, from milk is uh, five percent. For broccoli is uh, zero point one percent. For coke is three percent. For salmon is uh, zero point five percent. So we can have uh, minimum support for milk and broccoli. Uh, from where we can get the minimum of uh, milk or minimum of broccoli. So if you look at minimum of milk, which is 5%, minimum of uh, minimum support of broccoli is 0.1%. So we'll take the minimum of the all of both of these. So in 0 0.1 and 5, 0 0.1 is minimum. So we'll take that. There are many challenges. For example, support is no longer uh, no longer anti-monotone and things like that. So uh, we order the items according to the minimum support, and we need to modify the a priori algorithm. In the previous a priori algorithm that we just discussed, we are taking only one support, but now we can have support for different item sets. So L1 is a set of frequent items, and F1 is a set of items whose support is greater than minimum support 1, and then we can have minimum support 2, 3, 4, 5. So and candidate item sets of size 2 is generated from F1 instead of L1. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> so we can modify the a priori. And in traditional a priori, a candidate k plus 1 item set is generated by merging two frequent item sets of the same size of size k. And the candidate is pruned if it contains any infrequent set of size k. So pruning step has to be modified there over here. We prune only if subset contains the first item. OK? And uh, for example, broccoli is there. And uh, candidate is not pruned because coke and milk does not contain the first item. So pattern evaluation association, association rule algorithms tend to produce too many rules. And many of them are uninteresting and redundant. OK, so interestingness measures can be used to prune or rank the derived patterns. And in the original formulation of association rules, support and confidence are the only measures which are used. And you can see these diagrams. OK, so interestingness measure, we, as we have done already, that given a rule x implements y information needed to be compute to rule and uh, to compute rule interestingness can be obtained uh, from a contingency table and you can see go through this table and we have done this uh, coffee and tea example okay then there are many measures which are proposed in literature and some measures are good for certain applications, but not for others. And uh, what criteria should be used to determine whether a measure is good or bad? Uh, it depends upon the application. And what about a priori style support based pruning? And how does it affect these measures? It is. It will be discussed in the next uh, week's lecture. So. Uh, 
uh, we'll just have a go, go through of this that most of the association rule mining algorithms they use support measures to prune rules and item sets. A study effect of support uh, pruning to on correlation of items, it can be seen that uh, we generated one 10,000 random contingency tables and compute the support and pairwise correlation for each table and apply support based pruning and examine the tables uh, uh, that are removed. So there could be some interesting subject, subjective measures and uh, objective measures. Objective measures are rank patterns based on statistics computed from the data and uh, there were some studies and you can just skip these and then there were some subjective measure which rank patterns according to the user's interpretation and a pattern is subjectively measured in the uh, silver shares and Zolin so you can just go skip these studies okay so this concludes uh, this week's uh, course material and i hope that uh, you have seen uh, you have downloaded the slides you can see the slides you can see the study guide and uh, if you have any questions please ask Okay, you do not have any question, Mohammed. Okay, thank you. Okay, so just take a look on the, your slides and go through the lectures again and see if you have any questions.